Uh, so I hope uh, Mr. Daniel is going to be sharing from his end. Yes. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome once again to another inspiring edition of the Martina Teacher of the Year Inspired Series. Um, it's your host again, Adele Adeyemo from the Martina Teacher of the Year Project. I bring to you good news, the Martina Teacher of the Year competition for the 2022 edition is currently ongoing. And all you have to do is to visit our website, year to participate, fill up your form and stand a chance to win the grand prize of 6.5 million naira and many more amazing prizes, including a block of classroom or fully equipped laboratory donated to the school where you work. You also stand a chance to be sent on uh, capacity development training to um, a school abroad. Um, more also to be won by the runners up, first runner up and second runner up, as well as state champions from all the Texas states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory. I'm sure you are excited. Wait no further, visit the website to participate. Um, today, I have with me an exciting personality, an inspiring teacher, uh, a, a wonderful mentor, if I were to put it that way, in the house. Her name is Oluwa Bumi Anani. And she is with us, the 2020 Montina Teacher of the Year. What an amazing feat. She won across the Federation, including the FCT, to become the most awarded teacher in the year 2020. Um, today, Ms. Oluwa Bumianani, who would be saying hello to everyone on the call very shortly, would be telling us about her journey to stardom. Um, Ms. Oluwa Bumi, please say hello to our guests on the call, our audience on the call, rather. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. I want to say a very good evening to everyone watching me from every part of Nigeria, especially educators like myself. It's, I'm glad to be here. It's exciting to be here to exchange ideas with one another. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Anani. But before I continue, before I allow you to tell us your inspiring story, I want to give a background of what Martina Teacher of the Year competition is all about. Um, the Martina Teacher of the Year competition is a brainchild of the Nigerian Bureau's Felix Ohiwere Education Trust Fund. Uh, the fund was set up in 2015 um, as a tool to improve education educational development across the country. And through the front, the company that's Nigerian Bureau's has been able to impart on educational development with the constructions of over 3,000 schools, um, blocks of classrooms, as well as other educational facilities across the country, various communities. They've also been able to celebrate in across eight editions various teachers numbering up to 181 various teachers. They've been able to celebrate them, recognize them and reward them with various prizes according to their willingness. We also have the fact that the Montana Teacher of the Year project has birthed other um, champions, that's champions who have been able to win various awards at various other levels. For instance, we've had some of our winners go ahead to win the Global Teacher Prize um, and various other amazing awards. I will let Miss um, Oluwa Bumianani take over the show right now. Please pull up your presentation.
All right, Ms. Oluwa Bume, it's your show. Please go ahead. All right. Once again, I want to appreciate um, and the PLC for establishing the Multinational of the Year Award. It's a laudable one, and it's been impacting lives all across Nigeria, not, not just teachers, but including the numerous students that we are teaching, that we have the responsibility to impact. We want to say thank you, MBPLC. Thank you, Ohio De Felix, Ohio Wari Foundation, for thinking about teachers. Um, equally to, without this initiative, I wouldn't be here uh, participating in this inspiring series session. I want to say very big thank you to MBPLC for giving Oluwa Bumi and Nani this platform to share our experiences um, since um, cleaning, uh, clinching the Multinational of the Year Award. Thank you so very much. And today, it is my pleasure to take us on a journey, on a discussion where I will be sharing my experiences of being the multinational teacher of the year. As the journey so far, how the journey has been so far, it is my pleasure to be sharing these experiences. It is my pleasure to be sharing these experiences with us. And so I go to the beginning, childhood reflections. Well, as a child, I, I like to just acquaint us with a brief history, I mean, biography of where I'm coming from. I was opportune to attend uh, two primary schools, St. Martin's Day Notion Primary School in Surulere, and then upon relocation to, um, to a new base, I had to change school to St. Lawrence International Day, I mean, Notion and Primary School, uh, where I graduated. I did my primary one to primary six, I mean, primary four to six at um, St. Lawrence, the International Nursery and Primary School, before moving on to secondary school, Awori Comprehensive High School in Ipaja. Then um, after spending a year at Awori Comprehensive, I was obliged to move to transfer to Lagos State Model College, Merong in Lagos State. Oh, while I was at Lagos State Model College, well, in GSS3, I was, uh, I needed to make a choice. Should I um, go to the sciences, arts, or commercial? But so before I talk about the choice, as a child, I've always been teaching, you know, as the eldest in the family, I've had that platform to, to tell my siblings. I was um, a book freak, let me put it that way. And I was brought up by a mother who was always there for us, who was um, our tutor general at home. Uh -huh. <laughs> let me describe my mother as that. So, uh, so it was a culture that I imbibed. It was a culture I enjoyed. Transferring knowledge, sharing knowledge, being able to talk to my siblings, and then by extension to neighbors children whose parents, you know, trusted me. They could trust me with their children. And so that was how my teaching journey began. Then uh, gradually, thank God for our mentors, you know, and people who believed in me. Um, after, after secondary school education, I was I had the opportunity of uh, being, um, of, of teaching, of being employed. Let me use it that way, of being engaged. It's better I use the word engaged, not employed. You know, I will be engaged in the school, in school activities where I was assigned, you know, kindergarten classes. And that was how I began to own my skills as a teacher, but I never knew uh, that eventually I was going to end up, or I was going to be a teacher doing the business of education. And so I became fascinated with education. Then coming to the classroom, there were times when, okay, in the evening, we would be asked to wait behind after school to have one or two classes with some teachers. So in want of something to occupy my time with, having, you know, revised my notebooks for the day, engaged myself in some play with my friends, and, you know, you'll be bored. Um, I would, I remember I would stand in front of an empty class, or when one or two of my friends are in the classroom, I'll just pick a chalk, find an imaginary chalk, and I'll begin, I'll begin to teach. I'll, I'll begin to mimic some of my teachers. I'll pick a topic, maybe integrated science, because I used to like it so much um, as a secondary school student. Or I, I, I'm funny enough, I goodness, if I wasn't taking English language as a subject, anytime I wanted to mimic any of my teachers, is that I'd take um, integrated science, or I would take agric. Yeah, those are the subjects I was fascinated with, or even business studies. 
Um, so those way my childhood romance with um, being a teacher. Then when I got the GSS3, I sucked for my GSC examination and there was need for me to make the critical choice. Was I going to go to the vocational, that is the commercial class? Was I going to the arts class or was I going to be a science student? Oh, well, naturally, everybody thought for me and Annie was going to be a science student, but deep down within me, I knew I didn't really have that, um, I, I, I didn't really have that knowledge, that conviction that I was made for the sciences, even though everybody wanted me to be. But eventually, my parents assisted me in a way to make, my, to make up my mind. Well, despite the fact that they assisted me, it was still a dilemma. Why was it a dilemma? My mother wanted me to be a lawyer because she felt, oh, my daughter can speak well. She's so convincing and all that. Then my father wanted me to be a judge and accountant because he felt he had um, a role model at, um, at work, you know, uh, an accountant who, 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 who was very, very influential. He was well educated. And my father was always seeing me in the man. And <laughs> all along, he was nurturing my interest in accounting. Well, at the end of the day, I decided to go to the commercial class, not because I wanted to please my father, but I knew that within the find the subject combination was there. I could combine our subjects with commercial subjects, and that, that placed me in good step. So at the end of the day, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't I, I, I wouldn't be stranded as to what I wanted to become or what I wanted to the course of study I wanted to pursue at the end of the day. So combining my commercial subjects with my the, the major art subjects helped me at the end of the day to become who I am becoming today. Now, did I actually venture to study English? That is the direction. Now, I've talked about childhood reflections. I've talked about making the choice whether to go to the sciences, the arts, or the commercial class. Then the direction came. I remember my English teacher, Mrs. Papunda, and my guidance counselor, they were always intent on me studying mass communication owing to my activities, you know, at, uh, at, the, at, uh, at the Rotaract Club, the Character Counseling Club, and all that and the press club. So they felt, oh, I mean, you should be a mass communicator. You are a natural there. Since you did not want to, I mean, you, you refused going to the science class, so why not mass communication? And everybody had the same opinion, except for my mother who felt for me and I knew should be a lawyer. But deep within me, something deep inside of me knew that uh, I was just having, maybe, I, I mean, these were just suggestions, but they were not clicking with me in, in my inner being. Well. My English language, I mean, my primary school teacher, Mr. Kennedy, one day just looked at me. I went to him, I needed to fill my jam form. You know, that was the fifth time I was writing jam, not because I wasn't making my papers, but you know, our parents had this um, old school um, opinion, you know, that they had in their own days, that why don't you just say stay at home? Jam is gonna send you your, your result. And so I was, <laughs> I was in my comfort zone, luxury, luxury -ated in my comfort zone, waiting for Jack to send me my, my, my results and my admission letter. I never knew that I was living in a fool's paradise at the time. So until I realized that, ah, this is not the way things are done anymore in my country. And so um, the, the fifth time I was applying to the University of Lagos, um, that wasn't the fifth time for the University of Lagos, but to the university, I met my primary school teacher. My primary school teacher looked at me and said, Bumi, I know that you really, really want to be a lawyer, but um, you know what? I think you should be a teacher. I mean, you have it all. You've been in secondary, I mean, after secondary school, you've been teaching. I, I see you, I watch you, and I know what you love. I am your teacher. I brought you up in primary school. That's Mr. Kennedy. And I know what I love. I know what you can do, yeah. And so I decided to just, well, and I did apply for English in the Faculty of Education. <laughs> However, for reasons I couldn't get it because um, according to the submission given me, I didn't have CRP. So, okay, fine, that was the fourth application. So the fifth application was when I now decided to read English in the Faculty of Humanities. Now, going through the university, I studied English, I graduated well, and it was time for NYSC. NYSC came calling. That was in Adamawa State, Nigeria. And um, after the three weeks at the orientation camp, 
we were given our color letters. And lo and behold, <laughs> contrary to expectations, everybody felt that Bumi was going to serve in a, um, in, in a, in a media house, uh, considering my participation, my contributions to the OBS. Uh, so it was so fascinating, it was intriguing when I was posted to a secondary school. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, that was NYC. I was posted to Government Girls Secondary School. And it was an interesting, challenging experience. That was where I began to realize that truly teaching is so core for me. That it's not just fun. All those years that I've been romanticizing with teaching, it has just been, um, how I put it, a rehearsal, a dress rehearsal. But here there was real need. There were girls who needed an education. So I put myself into the work. I was handling 10 classes of uh, 10 arms of SS2 every single day, and I enjoyed it thoroughly because it was impact driven. Then after NYSC, I was facing another dilemma. Where should I work? Should I go to the media house? Should I go administrative or should I embrace my education? Because that seems to be my path. Well, I had a couple of students who were very close to me, and every opinion was, and to be, we want you to be go to, um, to the media house. You know, a lot of people will know you, you'll be so popular, we know we'll like you, and all. I said, so you don't want me to be a teacher. I felt the teaching um, profession is confined, you know, and then uh, teachers don't have money. That was the use of you getting a job, doing a career, I mean, pursuing a career where there is no financial prospect and all that. I looked at my students, and of course, a lot of people then Lagos have the same opinion. That will look like me, forget about the stitching job. You know, there are so many prospects, more brilliant, more bright prospects for you. However, deep within me, I knew I had a call. I needed to be in education. I needed to teach. Well, after teaching, actively post graduation from university, and then 2020, COVID-19 hit. Our COVID 19 hit, there was lockdown. Everywhere was on lockdown, including especially schools. Well, and that COVID 19, it was, it was a blessing in disguise because lots in our homes, we had the opportunity of engaging more actively on social media. We had the opportunity of becoming more creative with our time as teachers. We had the opportunity of engaging remote classes, you know, engaging our students. Um, remotely via Zoom, via Google Classroom, via WhatsApp, we needed to keep education going. It wasn't easy, but it was a necessity that we needed to, 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 to we had a responsibility to fulfill in as teachers. And um, I was a member of a WhatsApp platform, the Teachers Forum, and um, my mentor called my attention to me. And I thought about me, um, I saw an information on the platform, don't you think you give it a try? But uh, permit me to say something. In 2017, I actually tried um, applying for the MTO 2 y But something happened. I had a very big program I was preparing for. I had already finished, I mean, I had already completed the application and all that. It, just, it was just for me to submit. But there was a huge distraction. So 2017 went. So 2020, I looked at it again. Oh, do you think I should give it a go again and all that with all this COVID-19 distraction, the unease, the discomfort, the worry and all that. And I was encouraged. I just went to talk about mentorship. To have a mentor in one's life is very, very important. No matter how intelligent you are, you need a network, you need a collaboration, you need a partnership, you need someone who believes in you. Yeah, you believe in yourself. Yeah, but it's not enough for you to believe in yourself, even though that is the most essential thing. Because if other people believe in you and you do not believe in yourself, that's a minus. But when you believe in yourself, then you have other people who will celebrate you, who believe in the potential you have, who believe in your possibilities. That is a big multiplication for you. So if I had not, if, if I didn't have a mentor to nurture me, to encourage me, I would have gone for MTO2Y. Now, MTO2Y, the application. How did I go about the application? By the time I got the form, I started the form. First of all, the first thing I did, which I believe every teacher listening to us right now can gain, is get all your documents together. Before you even start answering any question, make sure all your documents are intact. What documents are we talking about here? We're talking about your birth certificate. We're talking about all your sworn affidavit of age. 
We're talking about your TRCN, your Teachers Registration Council Certificate, very, very important that you have it. We you have your valid ID, it's either your permanent voter's card, your international passport, your national ID card, or your driver's license. You have all your credentials, you have passport photograph according to the specification. Like mine, the specification was spectrum centimeter times spectrum centimeter, and I believe it's still the same. And of course, attach all your awards, all your testimonials, even though there is a course, a specific time within this time and that time. Gather everything together. Make Make sure they are ready before you start answering all the questions on the application form. Now, answering the application form, one of the things you need as a teacher, you need to be organized. You need to be organized as a person. Number two, you need to be creative. You need to be creative. And number three, you need to be original. Originality, organization, creativity are three key factors that guided me when I was applying for the NTOTY. And I am advising and I am encouraging us to adopt those three um, the, these three parameters or these three um, angles. Number one, creativity. You have to be creative. You have to be original and you have to be organized. What other things helped me when I was preparing for my MTOTY application, you know, in 2020? I, 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 um, I, had, I needed to have a deep understanding of the SDG goals. You cannot just wish that away. You cannot just pass that by. You need a deep seated understanding of the sustainable development goals. What are the sustainable development goals? How do they affect you as a teacher? How do they affect your lesson in the 21st century? What are the critical to your success in the classroom? Then, how do you merge them? How do you incorporate them? How do you make them relevant to whatever it is you want to teach in your area? Listen, my dear teacher, my colleagues, it doesn't matter what course you teach or subject you teach. It is music. There is something you can, there is something about the SDG goal that you can incorporate into your music class. For instance, there is peace education. You know, peace education is one of the elements of SDG. It may not be spelled as a as one of the goals, but it is embedded. It is embedded in any of those SDG goals besides the end result or the end goal of all the SDG goals put together. In one of the goals is to create peace. We are a society that is safer, a society where people can, can enjoy the freedom, where they can be stability, where they can be peace. So why don't you critically, why don't you creatively look for one of the SDG goals? They have SDG four, which is quality education. Or you look at gender equality, and then you find a way of incorporating peace education, use it in your music class. How do you use music to establish, to create a sense of security? and to produce, I mean, or to influence a safer um, um, environment for your students and for future generations. So as uh, while you are applying for your MTOTY, you need to have an understanding of the SDG goals. You need to have an understanding of education for sustainable development, which embeds global citizenship. As a teacher, you need to know what global citizenship is all about. Don't just pick your pen, don't just sit by your by, um, by your desk or your laptop and just begin to type away an understanding. Then how do you creatively and then incorporate all of these ideals, all of these concepts into your subject area, into that topic, into that topic you want to present as your topic during your application. And remember, the lesson plan lasts for just 40 minutes. How will you incorporate all the activities, all the resources, you be creative enough to bring them to bear, to make them relevant to what you want to do in 40 minutes. Believe you me, you need a lot of creativity. And then while doing your application, it doesn't have to be what you do or what you, it, 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 you, you can't, like when you say creativity, that means you are full of ideas on what can be possible, on what can be doable as a teacher in view. I give you all the resources needed to implement the ESD, the ESD goals, the, I mean, the ESD, and um, the SDG goals, as well as global citizenship and peace education in your classroom within the confines, within the confines of your lesson objectives and the topic you want to teach. Then finally, concerning NTOTY, you need to be, to, you, it, this is something you should have been doing. You need to have evidences to prove to the world, to prove to the panelists that you are not just an, a, 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 a dreamer, but, but beyond the dreamer, you have been working, you have been doing all of these things, you cannot give what you don't have. No matter how flowery your language is, it can be seen through if you have not been practicing.
to say all oh, the lofty ideas that you present in your MTOTY application. Let me retreat. Three principles that will guide you are originality, creativity, and organization. When you're writing, it's not just about how brilliant your ideas are, how coherent are they, how connected are they, and how do they evidence your participation, your co-creative ability in the classroom with your students. So, and finally, concerning MTOTY application, I would like you to know that you need to have somebody to guide you. All right, thank you very much. And so, um, by the time then I received a call, after submitting my application, I received a call a few months afterwards, I think two months afterwards, and the call was the beginning of my journey as MTU to a champion to becoming a different teacher. Because believe you me, once you win or clinch any award as significant as the Martina Teacher of the Year Award, your identity changes. So after receiving the call, I needed to raise up for the next stage. And that stage was to meet with the panelists. And the panel of judges was chaired by our very own professor, Pat Utomi. I got to Lagos and I had to face the giants. The panel of judges who were throwing questions at me, one after the other, you had to think on the spot of the moment. This were the giants I had to face on the spot of the moment. And this is really, really critical. It's sacrosanct. It is not enough. It goes a long way to show the panelists the originality of whatever idea you have been able to articulate during the um, application process. So while facing the giants, you have to eat up your peers. And the next thing that happened after I braced up to the challenge and I had to face the inevitable giant, I received the great news. And what was the news? On the 16th of October, 2020, while sitting amidst the large crowd, the audience, um, and then I've been called on the podium with other winners, I was declared the champion, national champion, 2020. And you can imagine the exhilaration, the elation I felt at becoming the champion. The blessings and the opportunities. Becoming the champion is not the end of it. It comes with a lot of blessings, a lot of opportunities. What blessings? You begin to, 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 to believe more in your, in your potential, in yourself. You begin to believe more in the profession that you have identified yourself with. You begin to believe that there is a prospect. Whether you work, especially for teachers at the private school, it is very easy for us to fall for the temptation, I mean, for the negative thought that, well, there is there seems not to be a prospect in this path that I have chosen. Yes, I mean, unlike those in the public schools, well, becoming a champion helped me to have of, I mean, to, to, it, it helped rekindle my faith that there is always light at the end of the tunnel, that there is hope at the end of the time, at the end of the day. And again, it exposed me to an array, a network of like-minded teachers. You can imagine people like Colin Cezanne, like Sokomia Kwaifa, like Rose and Kim Deli, and even outside the circle, I mean, Tai Abania, or uh, Mr. Essien, you know, even, even a reason, even outside the circle of the multinational of the year, state champions like Isaac Peng, like um, I, I, Isaac Peng, and many other, Joe Newton, you know, a lot of them, a lot of them. And even outside the state champions, you, 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 the, the, the being a champion also connects you with other like nights, you know, that you meet on Facebook, that reach out to you, that you reach out to them, and you have a robust capacity, robust knowledge. And then talking about students, you know, it's a top you get. As a champion, as an champion, you have the opportunity to impact lives, to impact students outside the confines of your classroom. And then you have the opportunity of also influencing action, influencing practices within the educational sector and even outside of it. You become a voice, you know, especially in the educational space where we need more voices that will be accredited to. And we can see a lot of changes that have been precipitated owing to the initiative of the MTOTY. A lot of state governments are beginning to recognize the teachers. Take for instance, Lagos State, Ogun State, um, Edo State. MTOTY started it. It's they started it all. And look at the impact, the ripple effect that it is having in, in different states. And before you know it, every other state government will catch the vision and education will be the better for it at the end of the day. What about the pressures and the self-talk? Becoming a champion does not immune one from pressures at all. Pre 
pressure of society, you know, they want you to lose your identity just because you have become a champion. They want you to carry yourself in a particular way. I mean, arrogantly, you, I mean, you are set up the, the temptation of, of trying to please people or people telling you you're not going to carry yourself as a champion. How do you expect to walk or to talk because you're a champion? So as a champion, there is need for us to still protect who we are, our identity, our belief system, our value system, whatever are those values that have brought us to where we are by the grace of God. We need to still stand up for those principles, for those value systems and add more values to them so that those values, those character-based values will take us higher and further. Then staying focused, in spite of the pressures, in spite of all the challenges associated with being a champion, the important thing, the test of a true champion is the ability to stay focused, is the ability to keep winning, is the ability to continue on the path of resilience, on the path of, 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 of success, and on the path of virtue as a champion. Being a champion does not mean that we now, that, that we now lose all, all, all sense of, all, 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 of character. No, it doesn't mean that rather it's a call to more responsibility because you have become a more of, I mean, a role model. People are looking up to you, they listen to what you have to say. So you have to be an embodiment of wisdom, an embodiment of virtue, an embodiment of resilience, especially tenacity. Moving on going forward, what are the lessons for me so far? In my journey as Martina teacher of the year, one of the lessons I've learned so far is that whatever made you or has helped you to become a champion there is need for us to build on those things and there is need for us and we cannot build on those things if we lack humility as a champion or um, the, uh, like the teachers who are listening to me right now you want to be a champion and that is the reason they are connected to us let us the consistency is key what have you been doing as a teacher what do you i mean by the time you become a champion do you stop doing all those things no like i said earlier becoming a champion is a call to a higher responsibility so there is need for us to do to to, to top up on whatever it is that has brought us this path and not rest on our oars that's the second thing do not rest on your oars as a champion so another thing is you continue to be a role model you continue to be inspiring you inspire yourself so that you can inspire others and then you avoid competition that is another lesson for me. As a champion, there is room for people to want to compete with you or even you want to compete with others. That is where the pressure comes in. And then you need to stay focused by talking to yourself that yes, when you got to the space where you're, where you're planning to be here, you weren't in competition with anybody. And so you have to remain focused, you have to stay focused and you need to, you know, you, you need to excuse yourself from distractions and distracting voices. Many, many lessons for me, self-improvement is another one. That's we will keep improving ourselves. Whereabout we have we receive people only conferences that will benefit us. Let us be part of it. That you're a champion does not mean you know it all. It doesn't mean you know it all. Yes, and uh, we, we need to keep improving ourselves and we need to keep sharing knowledge. We share ourselves with other people, we share our knowledge, our expertise now. And that leads us to social innovation. Remember, as a teacher, especially a champion. Especially those of us who are looking forward to becoming MCOTY champions. Social innovation is key. We need to be open minded. Being a champion is not just about you, it's about others. Now, talking about social innovation, we need to be reminded of something. There are social issues around us. The country, the problem of one country, is the problem of every other country. And the problem of an individual is the problem of every other individual. And so we cannot pretend as if that other that person's problem is not our own. Then, what are these social issues that have bombarded nations, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic? We have the issue of poverty that has increased alarmingly. We have the issue of financial stress. We have the issue of diseases. We have the issue of hunger. We have the issue of technological transformation. We have the issue of climate change. I mean, environmental degradation. We cannot just stay in our classes to teach all of these things. There is need for us to move from theory into action, from the classroom to the environment. What are we doing? As a teacher, what have you done? What are you doing? What am I doing? So contribute to benefit society. 
This is social innovation. It is looking for sustainable ways, efficient ways, effective ways to make sure that society is better, to make sure that people are safer, to make sure that the, 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 the environment is more secure for everyone of us. How do you come in as a teacher? You may want to ask. You may think that, oh, social innovation, making the world a better place, you know, can be um, the business of government and business owners. That is not true. As a teacher, you're a role model. As a teacher, you have well-developed social skills. What social skills am I talking about? Empathy. You're a good listener. You, are an, you, 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 have, um, um, you, you have a hold on your emotions. You, 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 you are understanding and you're adaptable. You are flexible. You are a great communicator. And these are the reasons why you should be part of social innovation. You should be part of those who are creating solutions out there. Then you are a change agent. The drivers of sustainable development, they are teachers. And education, I mean, um, it falls on the shoulders of a teacher and it doesn't accept you. You don't have to have all the resources, the resource you have at your disposal, the knowledge you have at your disposal, even the confines you have, your own, your, your own area is enough for you to start social innovation. Now, social, you are value driven. A teacher is value driven. That's why we have learning outcomes. We want to impact lives. Teaching is a humanitarian venture. And because of all these things put together, that puts us at, um, in the position to social innovate. Social innovation is not about creating new solutions. It's about contributing solutions to existing solutions. Yes. And so social innovation is action-based. We don't talk, it doesn't stop at us talking about it. For example, like what I'm doing, it doesn't talk about, stop about me talking about how teachers can apply for MTO to write. Why don't I mentor someone? That is social innovation. Like Okwa Ifa, he has a, a, a social space, teacher X platform. That is social innovation at a platform that seeks to assist teachers to get more, um, more knowledge, to be more impact free then. We have Connex SM who is into peace education, is going out there, out there to, 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 to inculcate peace habits, a peace mentality in the schools. These are contributions we're talking about. For example, we have somebody in Uganda, um, Rehema. Rehema used her own peculiar situation, you know, to become a socially innovative person. What do I mean by this? She was born by a mother, I mean, who she lost when she was still very, very young to HIV AIDS. And she had a father, she, she never saw a game owing to alcohol, I mean, excessive use of alcohol. And so Rehima was left alone. She was an only child. There was no family to cater for her. She struggled through life. And so she was exposed to a lot of, I mean, to men who wanted to take advantage of her. But vehemently, she refused to be taken advantage of. So how did she, how did she survive? Rehima decided to get them to acquire skills here and there, here and there, put them together. And thankfully, providentially, she was able to get by life. And then looking back at her own experience, she decided to start a Girl B community initiative where girls at age could come together to share experiences, to, to, to express purposes, because they say that the way they would, uh, that when a problem is shared, it is half solved. And she didn't stop at that. She noticed that most schools, the, the, I mean, the, 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 the drop out students, I mean, teenage girls who happen to get pregnant, you know, who happen to get involved in teenage pregnancy. And so they stopped their education. Rahima looked in, well, she said, no, this, this girl still have a right to get educated. And so she started, she, she incorporated um, the teenage women, I mean, the teenage girls in her program. She started a school whereby the teenage girls would easily access education at their own pace, acquire skills at their own pace. She was solving a problem. That is social innovation. Even young girl can decide to solve a problem. So many young people on their own are solving problems in their communities. What about you, a teacher? Your action, your solution, your innovation should be action-based, should be insight-based. Insight-based means that it should take care of the problems you have noticed in your community. It shouldn't be outside the needs of a community. It should be value-based. What do I mean by value-based? It should be founded upon the principles of fairness, of equality, and inclusivity, and then should be tech-based. What do I mean by tech-based? Incorporate technology to bring the stories of others out to make sure that people know what you're doing. And this is also part of what MTO25 is, is passing across. MTO25 wants you to tell them your story. They want to know the impact you're making in the 
classroom and outside the classroom, how you're changing lives, how you're improving lives, how you're giving the youngsters and your community a chance at improving their future. Now, your social media can also be skills and passion fees. When you talk about skills, you're not talking about your ability to handle digital tools, but your ability to be empathetic, to collaborate, you know, to lead, to use initiative, to communicate effectively in an empathetic way, to be participatory, and of course, it should be passion based. You should not do social innovation because you want to make money. All those ones are rewards that will come by the way. Your first motivation should be passion, passion for the people out there, passion to restore this community, to society, to give people a chance to pursue a same existence. And then your social innovation should be aesthetic goals based. It should solve one or two problems out of the 17 global goals that has been itemized by the UN to be achieved by 2030. And of course, your social innovation initiative should be character based. You must have integrity. You must, it must be human centered. You must, it must be human centered. So having talked about the social innovation, remember as you plan, as you work, and as you prepare to be the next champion, please. Keep those golden nuggets in mind. Becoming an MTOTY champion, it, it should not stop with you. Pass the torch. I'm talking to champions. I say whether you are at the state or national level, mentor someone. That teacher that is struggling to, to, to fill in um, the application form for MTOTY, assist the person. I am not saying write it for that person, but you could um, provide tips, guidelines, assistance to that person. Then becoming an MTOTY champion is not just about you, it's about impact. Your awards, your rewards should not stop with you. Make an impact. Go out there and do something with what you've got. Becoming an MTO champion is about social innovation. Make sure you use the advantage you have as a champion to solve a need to create a, I mean, to create an impact in the, in the school you are in, in the community you are based in, and for yourself and others. On this note, I want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for being a teacher with the difference. Thank you because you are highly celebrated. And thank you for giving me this platform to share my experiences with you. I look forward to seeing more applications from your end. I look forward to seeing more winners. And of course, so that we can build this educational space in Nigeria together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Anani. Very, very inspiring. I can't even begin to quantify the um, level of, of passion that you have put into your presentation. It's very, very laudable. And I believe all of our viewers currently and those that will watch this video later on would be inspired to visit the website multinateacheroftheyear.com um, to participate in this year's edition of the competition. Um, and quickly, we'll go into some answer and question session where we get to know more about your own personal experience in winning this award. Uh, first off, I want to um, ask you, how long did it take for you to um, fill your form? So we've heard some feedback from some of our applicants for this year's um, edition. They say, oh, the form is quite voluminous. It, it takes a while to get filled up. Um, I think I need some time to put my response together in a in a form that I am comfortable with and and this what would you say first how was your experience how long did it take you and what would you say is the most ideal time frame to complete um, an applicant's entry thank you very much sir, for the question um the ideal time frame to complete okay to complete um, the application form it's two weeks. I will explain the reason. It's two weeks. When I was writing my application, I was taking it a day at a time. You know, there is a saying that an apple a day drives the doctor away. The interesting part of the application is yes. that it is, <laughs> it is segmented. You know, I have my copy here. It is segmented into sections. So I remember very vividly, I would take one per section, to, uh, section one part. Um, I took section one, and section two together because section one is just about providing personal information. So section two, I took them together. I will take them for a day. Then the second day, I will move to the next section. That was what I was doing until I completed it. 
Now, after completing it, I did not just submit immediately. I had to wait for a space of time because in writing, we learned something that leave your work you know, aside for two, three days. Because when you go back, you will notice one or two errors or one or two omissions. And then there will be inspirations as well. And that was what I did. I left my work for one, two, three days. Then I went back to it, going through it one after the other. Then there was something else that always guided me. I was, all, I was, I was a working application. Every time I was always thinking about that thing, thinking about that question, so that if an idea occurs to me, I'll quickly take down, the, I, I was always you know, holding a book, I'll put it down. Or if I'm not with my book, my phone, I'll quickly put it down so that it doesn't leave. And then I'll quickly go back to my application to incorporate it, to include it. It was when I was convinced that I had done all I should do. That was when I now developed, I mean, I was confident enough to submit. So what I'm trying to say is that, at most two weeks, then try don't do not try to rush the application process. Take it a day at a time so that you have clear thoughts, you'll be able to refine your thoughts, and then give yourself a window period to go back to your work to revisit it, to reread it. And if you have a trusted eye, that is where mentorship comes in. Let that trusted person, you don't need many people, you need just one person. There is something called peer review. Let that one person who knows you very, very well read through your work and if there's any area where you seem to be exaggerating the person will call your attention that you seem to be exaggerating there don't you think you should turn it down i mean you know because originality is key to summarize anyone who is applying for mto 2 y respect the earlier the better so that you have ample time to give inspiration to make inclusions alterations and an improvement on your work thank you thank you well said miss anani well said um and i think our teachers should take this as a feedback you don't have to rush through your form you don't have to oh i need to fill this up today or in uh, within two days or, or three days you can actually take your time to complete your form because actually you are filling in your entry to become the most celebrated teacher in nigeria and that should count for something in terms of putting in down qualitative feedback responses in your form. Thank you, Mr. Anani. I have uh, a few more questions to bring out what your personal experience has been. And that would be a guide for our teachers who are applying for this year's um, edition. Um, some of them are having some challenges um, with their TRCN certification. Um, I want you to explain how you went about getting your certification and also putting it in for the Motina Teacher of the Year during your time. All right, thank you very much for the question. Now, the TRCN, it is um, that's Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria. Um, you are supposed to go there and then tell them that is here in Yola, we have an office. So when the teacher goes there, either you go there as a teacher or if you have a very good management system in your school. The principal or the vice principal academy could represent the interests of all the teachers who do not have TRCN yet and then represent it at the TRCN office. Then the forms are paid for. You prepare for the examination. For me, lucky, <laughs> luckily for me, I didn't have to go through that recall because we were the first set. We are amongst the first set of teachers to get the TRCN certification. So, so we were exempted from writing the examination. But for subsequent teachers who just joined us where I work, they had to sit the exams. Now, writing the examination, it will take some time, just a few months for you to get your certificate. It will give you a number. Like my own number, I have my number here, 007. It is AD S06077. So when you they give you the number, that certifies you that you are TRCN cleared. Before you now talk about you want to get a license, but thankfully MTOTY is just asking us to get our certification number. That is it. Then there are some people who have written the examination, but their results are not yet out. That shouldn't deter us from applying. We can actually write in brackets, I don't know if I'm correct, that PG and TRCN in view, which means that you have written the examination, you are awaiting certification. MTOTY, they have a way of verifying all of this with the TRCN. So if you put in view, definitely your name, your data is with the TRCN. And MTOTY team, they will definitely um, make contact 
with TLC and I went to verify the, 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 the authenticity of your claim. Why not? We are in FGO2 is here to encourage teachers not to intimidate them or to discourage them from participating in this contest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Anani. Thank you for your own experience and for encouraging teachers. And just to put it clearly, um, we do actually demand for teachers to have their registration and their certification from CRCN. And this is because um, to become a teacher of note in Nigeria, you need to be certified by the governing council for the profession. Um, just as you said, however, I would like to encourage that teachers at least do get the certification number. So what you might have is a number in waiting. So they could give you a number that would then um, attest to the fact that you've begun the process but haven't concluded. But to put in that you have begun the process without putting some, um, um, like a number or a traceable ID with the TRCN, we would not acknowledge that with the Martina Teacher of the Year. But yeah, I hope I've been able to answer that question, um, supporting what Ms. Oluwa Bomi and Ali have said. Um, another very good question that some of our participants have for you today about your own experience and what you think they should do is getting their principal's endorsement. It's a very key requisite uh, for the application. Lots of teachers feel um, discouraged when they get to that point to say, oh, how do I approach my principal? Perhaps their principal is not always available or is not the approachable type, um, quote and unquote. Or um, they feel, oh, can I do, just submit this without having to involve um, another person who might not be supportive of my application? How do you think teachers should navigate that? Please start your response with your own experience. Uh, okay. okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, this question is sacrosanct to the success of any MTO2 application. Now, let's, we have different kinds of principles. And um, thankfully, our moderator has um, listed them. We have principals who are not just, they are never around because they are engaged in one thing or the other. And there are principals who are not approachable you know, for one reason or the other, best to them. How the, first of all, let me start with myself. I had, um, I, I have a good relationship, or should I say I had <laughs> a very good relationship with my principal, you know, prior to MTOTY. He encouraged a lot of things I was doing. And I have a very good relationship with the other principal officers like the Vice Principal Academy and the Vice Principal Special Matters. So it was easy for me. Even the proprietor of my school, I work in a private school. I could walk up to him to say, sir, this is what I'm doing. I need your assent on this form and all that. So for me, my principal was approachable. I could meet him. I have a good relationship with the principal officers. That is on one hand. Now let's talk about other people with peculiar cases. Your principal is never around. You may submit your application form. One week, two weeks, you go to the secretary to ask for your form. And the secretary tells you, oh, this girl has not been coming. You know, she's busy, she traveled, she has engagement. It has not been signed. I believe that in any system, there is a protocol. If the principal is not available, there should be somebody who should hold forth on behalf of the principal. Is that the vice principal academic, academic or vice principal special matters or even your HOD? Your principal should have been able to place somebody in a position of a responsibility to act in his or her state before his arrival. So the issue of your teacher and your principal travel should not even come, should not, should not even come to bear. Except, of course, you don't have a good relationship with a person who is standing in for your principal. Now, let's come to the third scenario. The person standing in for your principal, you do not have a very good relationship with him or her. There is, see, Yoruba say, if you want to walk on a wet ground, you have to pour water. There is a way, human relations, humility, you have to humble yourself. You must have studied the person. There is something this person wants. Maybe the person likes you kneeling down for him or her. Whatever that person wants, give it to that person. You know, so that you can get what you want. There is no way, even a lion, anybody can live with a lion and get what he or she wants from that lion. You just know what that person wants, including your principal. The principal is available, but it's difficult, unapproachable. Continue, continue to disturb that principal. At the end of the day, you will wear that person out. 
with your persistence, with your consistency in our course, your respectful attitude. Nobody can resist respect. Nobody can resist humility. Once you are showing genuinely, and please be genuine about it, not just because you want your form signed, but let you just make up your mind that, okay, fine. I realize that with that, that this person will be needful, will be useful to me at one point or the other in my life. Let me just eat the humble pie and be respectful and give the person what he or she wants. I believe that with all this, with, with all our skills in human relations, there is nobody who cannot to do something for us or with us. And of course, above all, prayer. Before you meet with that person, let us be prayerful. There is nothing that, I'm not trying to sound spiritual here. Whether you pray in your heart or you pray, you, you verbalize it, just go with that confidence in your heart that this person is going to listen to you and do what you wish to do. Then finally, in case all of these do not work, we have a platform. You have our numbers. You can contact us. We can meet. We can we, we can help you talk to our MTO to our, like um like our moderator here. We can put a call through to them so that we can channel your specific challenge or situation to them. And I'm sure that we have a solution for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Anani. And on a final note, I want you to kind of explain to audience that are watching us live and those that will watch the video later on, on how, um, what the experience for you was like after you were um, gotten back to, to tell you that your form was selected and you are amongst the state champions and you are among the national um, top, ten, top 10 candidates for the national award. Um, can you tell us what was your experience like how was the interview process and then uh, meeting the jury, all of that, uh, and then we'll close from there. This is the most interesting part for me. You know, receiving the call that day, I, I can never forget that day at all. I was in the office with my wife from the academy, I needed to do something for him. When I got, I saw the missed calls. I was wondering who can this be? And then the call now came again, that was Mr. Daniel calling me. I was all excitement. In fact, what I needed to do at the vice president's office, I had to postpone it. I was agog. I was over the moon. I couldn't believe it. I was like, ah, really? You mean I skilled through? Not that I was that you no, know, but I knew that there would be many applications. I was really, really excited. Then I didn't allow the excitement get into my head. I knew there was another hurdle to cross. So I began to go through my application form. Everything I had written, I began to go through them, and then I began to recollect some of the things, other things I started doing, because I think that was the second week into school resumption when I received the call. Okay, what have I been doing so far within these two weeks? But no, since applying, has there been any other thing I've been doing? I began to jot them out, I began to prepare myself. Um, then a day to travel it, uh, take it and back in on the tree. I remember going over my application form all over again, word for word, page by page, and then recollecting, like I said, collecting all the things I've been doing. Then facing the jury, I, the, uh, I was I was nervous. I can't hide that fact. You know, these were people I've never seen in my life. They were looking very serious. They were friendly, but looking serious. I was I didn't know what question they would ask. And the questions, let me tell you, they were not in full, they were outside the scope of what I had read in my application form. They were questions that will bring out your originality. If all I had written in my application were fake, false, cooked up, it would have been revealed at, I mean, during that panel session. They were questions that demanded you to think on the spot of the moment, which is why I'm encouraging teachers, please be original. If you're not original, it will show. Then um, when after the, um, the, the first session with the panelists, there was a general session where they asked us questions together as contestants. You know, the first stage was when individually you will, out of the view of the other contestants, you will face the panelists alone. Now the third stage was when you had to sit together and then you would quiz, uh, ask us questions. So at that stage, I realized something. Better let your voice be heard. You know, you cannot just sit down and say that people are talking. What about you? You're also an individual. Talk for yourself as well. And then the DJ came. Ha! Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, my heart was in my mouth. I couldn't even take a sip of Martina. I remember the waiter telling me, ah, oh, madam, you've not touched anything since you came into the hall and all that. In my mind, I said, oh, uncle, this is not what brought me here. I know what brought me here. No before bring me here. So the excitement, the anxiety, not, not fear. 
And then when they were pulling out all the, funny enough, I didn't even know um, all the prizes at all. I was attached to be the national champion. I didn't know. I just, you know, you know, I knew there was going to be a monetary reward. But the University of Manchester thing, hey, when I heard it, I was like, my father, my father, you mean you came. Hey, God, don't let it be me. Oh, let me be the beneficiary. I was just hopeful. And then when we were called on the stage, the first time when they called my um, the first three contestants, my name and all that, I thought that was a friend. I was just grateful to God. Then the final one, national champion, ah, you mean Pumia Nani? Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I began to remember all the things I had gone through, all the pessimistic, you know, reactions from people, all the challenges of being a teacher in a private secondary school, all those memories came flooding back. And I, 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 I knew I, I had tears in my eyes. There were tears of gratitude that God, you mean as a teacher, one can actually have all of these, you know, the, it, it, it was a big moment for me. And of course, I was happy for my co-contestants as well. It, was, it wasn't just my own way, it was our own way. You know, I had dreams, ideas on how we could all work together, collaborate on the latter skill and all that, we're trusting God. So on you know, the whole, it's a beautiful experience, honestly. And I would encourage any teacher, if you're listening to us right now, it could be you. Do not hold yourself back, give yourself a chance. You never can tell, it might be you this year, 2022. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. You've done my work for me. You've literally closed the session on a high. Thank you very much, Ms. Oluwabomi Anali. It's been a very inspiring session. We still have more for you, our audience. There are more inspiring okay. sessions scheduled. Um, and join us again on Thursday as we bring to you another edition of the MTOTY Inspired Series. Signing out at the layer at the MO. And do not forget, all you have to do to participate is visit the website www.maltinateacheroftheyear.com. Thank you and stay blessed.